Hi, it's Emily from the Broken Science Initiative. And today we're going to discuss an essential concept from Bayesian statistics that contrasts with the frequentist idea of p-values. We talk about why Bayesian reasoning provides a more nuanced view of statistical evidence, as well as other things. Now, I did an earlier video on p-values and how they work or how they don't work in medical research and beyond. And it's worth saying again here, because I know many people think this is super boring and hard and not important. And I just wanna remind you that if you're trying to navigate the healthcare system or generally sort of read the news at large carefully, it's really, really important to understand p-values. Now, every time that you see a headline or you read a story or a medical study, or even like a business practice, or even things like how to raise your kids, you're gonna see the word significant. And it's because some researcher somewhere found a p-value that was less than 0.05. And that is the basis for justifying the use of the word significant. So start looking for stories that say researchers found blah, blah, was significantly increased, decreased, or just significant in general. And it's important to understand that that's because of a p-value. That's how that works. And it's a requirement for most medical studies or otherwise. So I highly encourage you to watch the other video on p-value so you understand how they work or don't work and what they are. Um, and then this video is gonna really discuss the sort of alternative approach, which uses Bayes' theorem and sounds a little complicated, but it's really not. And it's far better because it gives you a range of probability rather than yes or no. Okay, so let's start with some real world examples, which I think will help sort of illustrate this. How do you think insurance companies set premiums? Or how does the Navy locate missing vessels? So we're gonna unravel this mystery and in doing so, hopefully explain a little bit more about Bayesian statistics and how they contrast with the frequentist idea of p-values and otherwise. So let's start with the insurance industry. We all get insurance. An insurance company has to be able to predict the probability of a customer making a claim based on a whole host of factors. Let's say it's driving, right? So your driving history, what kind of vehicle you're driving, and any other things that might compile into that. They manage to set the premiums accurately and manage risk effectively. So how do they do that? Okay, so now let's take another scenario. In 1968, a submarine went missing and the U.S. Navy had to narrow down the search area and eventually locate the wreckage. They had the submarine's last known location and possible routes that it could have taken. But the ocean is huge, right? So how did they go about pinpointing the exact location where the wreckage was? In both cases, they've been able to do this successfully using Bayesian methods. And I like to say that sort of when the shit hits the fan, people seem to use Bayesian reasoning over and over. Yet in medicine and other areas of research, it's not what is the dominant approach. And I think that's sort of just a hangover, right? Like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense why they're using this binary system of yes, no, rather than giving you a range of possible outcomes that allows you to then narrow things down. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Rather than starting with the null hypothesis, and an alternative hypothesis, as we do in frequentist statistics, in Bayesian reasoning, we start with the notion of prior beliefs. And these are called prior probabilities. And when we update these prior probabilities using observed data, we get something called posterior probabilities. These posterior prob probabilities give us a direct measure of the evidence supporting different hypotheses. So another way to think about this, which I think we do all the time, just in our normal lives, I actually think this is sort of how our brain is designed to function. If you think of prior probabilities as just things we already know, right? So we're thinking about if it's friendship, which is an example that people seem to really be able to understand. I'm friends with you because I can trust you, I can rely on you, we have fun together. These are things that I've experienced with you. They're observations I've made about the way that we interact and we get along. And over time, those things may get stronger or they may get weaker. And depending on those, I change my idea of our friendship or my notion of trust about you. Those are all taking prior information and applying it to where we are today in our relationship and also making a prediction, right, which would be the posterior of where, where is this relationship going? Are we gonna continue to being friends? Are we as close as we used to be? That's all 
That's it. That's Bayesian logic right there. It's not complicated. And it's so different than saying like, yes, no. We're friends today. Yes, no. I'm going to make a prediction about the future. Yes, no. It's a much more nuanced approach that I think allows for far more accuracy. So E.T. James was a physicist and a strong advocate of Bayesian probability who we really love at the Broken Science Initiative. And he might point out that p-values only tell you about the probability of getting data as extreme or more extreme than what was observed, assuming the null hypothesis is true. Now it's a big assumption. It does not tell you anything about the actual probability of the hypothesis being true, which is what you really wanna test. Whereas in contrast, Bayesian methods allow us to calculate that probability of a hypothesis being true given the observed data. This is a more intuitive, I think, and a direct way of interpreting these sort of statistical results. So moreover, you could say the Bayesian analysis provides a distribution of credible values for the effect that you're studying. Again, allowing for this more nuanced approach or interpretation that accounts for uncertainty. And uncertainty seems to be something that we're really uncomfortable with but things are far more uncertain than they are certain. So start wrapping your head around that concept too, which we'll talk a lot more about. So let's give another example. In a medical study, comparing the effectiveness of two treatments, a Bayesian analysis might show that there's a 95% probability that treatment A is between 10% to 20% more effective than treatment B. This provides much more information. And again, this nuanced picture than a p-value would, which might simply tell you that there is a significant difference between the treatments without providing any real information about the size of the effect or the uncertainty associated with it. I hope that makes sense. Now, critics of Bayesian analysis say that they're problematic for two main reasons. One, that they're computationally intensive. So Bayesian methods are being computationally demanding is something you'll see a lot. To which I would say like computers have come a really long way and we're no real, no longer like kind of hamstrung by the ability to do this kind of math and calculations and you know things that if we were using a pen and pad, well, maybe I would agree it's a little bit trickier, but you can easily train a machine to do this stuff. And frankly, people are using statistical computer tools to do p-values too. So I don't, that kind of, that criticism falls flat with me. And then the other one, is that they think that there's this sort of subjective notion of picking priors, that your choice of a prior can influence your results, which a lot of critics will argue is adding subjectivity into your analysis. So you have to ask, is it better to have prior information that may be incomplete or flawed and probably is, or no prior information? And I would argue that actually the prior information is really important just it's also just sort of like plausible reasoning it's how we make decisions in life we don't go into some sort of analysis in any other aspect of our life and not take into account our experience and our knowledge and all of that to come up with a way of making a decision moving forward so this idea that prior information is biased well in Bayes we actually take the prior information and we're constantly refining it so it's not hard and fast in that way it's actually pretty loose. And as you start to narrow down on the priors, you get better and better outcomes. And so it's not as finite. So I would say some prior information is way better than none. And this idea of refining priors is really important. And I find the notion that frequentists lack priors really problematic in the context of p-values because there's this glaringly problematic prior in p-values which is that there's this assumption that the null hypothesis is true. They're, despite the fact that they say they're against priors, they have a huge one embedded in their notion of comparing the null to the alternative hypothesis because they're assuming the null is true. There's no test that the null is true. So that's a prior, isn't it? I wish somebody could explain to me why that's not been considered a prior. To me, that feels like a huge assumption that we're making based on prior information. So their criticism of Bayesian statistics, including priors, is kind of hypocritical, right? Because they're actually using priors too. Now, not in a complete way, the way that Bayesians would, because they're taking lots of little bits of information and putting them in and refining them over time to get better outcomes. Whereas in the frequentist view, they're taking prior, the, the idea, the prior knowledge being the null hypothesis is true, and they're not refining it. They're just, that's an assumption that's a 
you know, complete truth to them, which we don't, there's no reason to believe that. So from a Bayesian perspective, research validation is more about accumulating probabilities that quantify our confidence in different hypotheses. While p-values measure how extreme our data are under a null hypothesis, Bayesian methods give us a direct probability of the hypothesis being true, which is more often in line with what researchers really want to know, right? So I'm a big proponent of considering Bayesian methods and being used in these medical studies or in other things to determine significance because of these reasons, right? It gives you a range. It gives you some real probability to think about. It's not yes, no. And it also considers uncertainty, which we'll talk more about, but is really, really important. And I think so much of our modern brains are focused on being certain about things. And if you can shift that paradigm to thinking about what is the level of uncertainty, you're going to start looking at these problems in a totally new way. So I hope this was helpful.